Your action is the biggest thing that you can do in combat in Dungeons and Dragons. Then Pathfinder came around with their three action system and blew the game up. And now with the upcoming launch of my new tabletop roleplay game system, codename DC 20 RPG, I am taking that concept and running with it. I truly believe I've improved on some things and solved some problems with action economy systems in tabletop roleplay games, and I'm excited to share it with you. So in the big picture of DC 20 RPG, you get four actions. And I made an entire video on that a few weeks ago. The link for that will be down in the description. And a lot of you guys had a lot of questions about what you could do with actions and people had, how, what about attacking? If you have four actions and you take four attacks, that's crazy. So I definitely should have mentioned some of these things in that video to ease some of your concerns, but that's what we're diving into in this video of what you can do with those actions every turn. Attack, move, hide, grapple, shove, and a help action that's actually really cool to use. But while you're watching this video, if you like some of the stuff I'm saying, if this game system sounds interesting to you, share it with some other people let them know about it and think about joining the patreon because that's the number one way to help support this game system i do weekly posts rule reveals live streams about dc 20 rpg along with a bunch of other resources on top of that for rewards for patrons as well i literally wouldn't be able to do any of this without my patrons and this new game system wouldn't even be able to become a thing without all of you so thank you okay diving right in this is the first time i'm revealing this in a video this is the actual alpha rules for dc 20 rpg this is the whole thing this is just the second about actions whole bunch more that i'm going to be releasing to patrons and all that stuff here soon but these are combat actions the first two things to talk about here are the multiple action penalty and empowered actions the multiple action penalty is in place for multiple different actions for lots of reasons. It would be terrible and game breaking if you were able to make four attacks, attack, 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 with no penalty, because that's what most people would just do. Four attacks would slow down the game. Now there's already things in DC 20 RPG that are gonna wildly speed up combat more than any system that I've seen before. That's a whole nother topic. But it also prevents weird things like grappling four times until you can eventually grapple them. You make a grapple, 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 grapple. And the help action with this system is actually really cool, but then I don't want people to just be like, I take my entire all four turns to help, 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 help. I want people to be strategic and tactical with their thoughts when they're thinking about what to do on their turn. But don't worry, movement actually doesn't have a multiple use penalty and you can move as much as you want. Movement is dynamic, awesome, etc. But if you take multiple actions back to back to back, you gain stacking disadvantage. So yes, you could make four attacks technically, sure, if you really wanted to. The first one's gonna be a normal straight up attack roll. The second one is gonna be at disadvantage. Again, disadvantage means you take two d20s, roll them and take the lowest. And that also is important because if you make a third repeated action, a third attack, a third grapple, whatever, you're at double disadvantage, which means you roll three d20s and take the lowest of that. Four attacks in one round, you're rolling four d20s and taking the lowest. Yeah, don't attack four times. I wanted to create a system that has penalties for repeated actions, but you still could do them. But also in the same way, can't just bash your head against the same thing until it eventually works. Like escaping from a grapple would also fall in this category. Your first time you try and escape from the grapple, you'd be a normal straight up roll. Second time, disadvantage. You could still keep trying though. That's probably not a good idea. You should probably do something else. Speaking of advantage and disadvantage, there's something called an empowered action. Any of these actions require you to roll a d20 of some kind to make a check, an attack roll, whatever. Anytime you take one of those actions, usually it costs one action point to take this action. You can choose to empower that action and spend an additional action point to grant yourself advantage. That first attack on your turn is really important. You want to spend an extra action point to give yourself advantage on that. Let's go. But now you have taken one attack and your next attack will be it disadvantage. Okay, fine. Maybe you weren't planning on making that second attack anyway. You're going to do something else. Or another option I've seen done before, and this is an interconnected design philosophy here, is you can make your first attack roll straight up. No advantage, no disadvantage. And then your second attack would have disadvantage because of the multiple attack penalty. But if you wanted to on that second attack, instead of it being at disadvantage, you could spend two action points, spend an additional action point on that second attack, giving yourself advantage which would cancel out to now just a straight up roll. So these two rules connect with each other really nicely. Multiple actions give you stacking disadvantage, but there's also an empowered action where you can spend one action point to grant yourself advantage. Now, currently you cannot double empower things to where you give yourself advantage and advantage again and keep spending more action points like that. It's just a one-time thing. But now let's get into these specific actions because we got attack, move, disengage, dodge, grapple, help, hide, an object interaction of some kind, searching for things and casting spells. Right now let's go through these actions. First thing you can do is attack. Again, you have four action points. Now, at later points in the game, as you level up, there are times where you go to five action points. That is something that's gonna be heavily play tested, et cetera. But for right now, we're sticking with 
four action points. You can spend one action point to make a martial attack. That's shooting a bow, making a punch, swinging your weapon, obviously. And then there's the multiple attack penalty, which gives you stacking disadvantage, like we just talked about. For movement now, this is a departure from Pathfinder. And Pathfinder, once you take the move action, you can move, but then once you do anything else, all that movement you had just gets lost in the ether for some reason. So in DC 20 RPG, whenever you move, you gain movement speed, which the default movement speed is four spaces on the grid, so four little squares, right? So as soon as you take the move action, boop, you gain four squares worth of movement, right? Four actions, four squares, and you can spin those. You can break up that movement however you want. You could move one space, make an attack action, move another space, take the help action, move another space. You spending the action point to get movement gets you that movement and you don't just randomly lose it until your turn's over. Once you're in your turn, sure, then it's gone. Disengage and dodge work pretty cool. So disengage, you can spend one action point to impose disadvantage on opportunity attacks, adding another little bit of strategy and decision-making. Because there's a lot of times where you want to move out, but you want to risk it, and there's that choice of like, ah, do I take the opportunity attack or do I disengage? And man, disengage is a really big commitment of action economy. Ah, here's a third option. You could spend one action point to grant that opportunity attack disadvantage. And technically this could be multiple opportunity attacks that you grant disadvantage to, or you can spend an additional action point, kind of like the empowered thing earlier. Do you see how this is all kind of connecting? You can spend an additional action point for a total of two to get immunity and truly take the disengage action. Dodge works kind of the same way. If it's on your turn and you want to take the dodge action, you can. You spend one action point, the next attack you take, it has a disadvantage. Or if you want to spend two points, really go defensive and hunker down, you can get what the true dodge action is in all attacks until the start of your next turn have disadvantage. I just think this offers a lot of tactical choices and is very balanced. Now we're going to get into grappling and helping. Ooh. Grappling is real simple. You can spend one action point to initiate a grapple on somebody or spend one action point to escape a grapple from somebody. And that's it. It's really, actually really simple. All right. So help action. This is something I'm really, really excited for. Now, again, full disclaimer, this is the play test and this could look a little different at game launch, especially when it comes to these options that I'm giving people because I want people to try out stuff and I think it's really cool. So to break this thing down, you can spend one action point to grant someone a help dice. You can do this to an attack roll. If you're close enough to be able to help them with their attack, you can grant them a help dice. We'll get to what a help dice is in a second. Or if it's a check of some kind and you're proficient in that check, you can want to help them with it. You can do that as well. And spoiler alert for the future, spellcasters can actually help each other cast spells if they know how to cast the same spell. But ooh, that's a whole nother topic. So now what is this help dice? You get a choice. Whenever you give the help action, you can give someone advantage like usual you give them advantage and if somebody had disadvantage it's it, all that kind of stuff it all the interactions between advantage and disadvantage and all the stacking that you've seen in the system all is true so one of the help dice options is an advantage dice which is rolling another d20 you know how that works but here's the really cool part that i really am excited to do and try is a d8 help dice you give the person a d8 you literally could slide it across the table and literally give them a d8 or you could roll it yourself again that's kind of a table type thing but either way this d8 is rolled like a bardic inspiration type of situation and added to that check. So now this D8 will always be a help to the roll and you add it. Even if you roll a one, it's always adding something. But there's also a multiple help action penalty. If you get too crazy helping people out all over the place, I don't want to just have people handing out D8s and that's their entire turn. So the D8 the first time, sure. The second time you take the help action, it becomes a D6, then a D4, then it's just a plus one. And currently, yes, you can help the same creature multiple times. I don't really want to implement a, a ban against that of a once per creature basis until I see something break in playtest. And there's also a variant help action here which I'm not gonna get into because that's definitely also gonna be a playtest thing, which it basically turns the help action into a reaction where you can reactively help your allies. Maybe, but let's keep going. We have the hide action where you can take the hide action, which again works, you're trying to hide. It's your stealth versus their awareness and all that kind of stuff. Awareness in this game is perception. That's another topic. Now for object interactions, this is another really cool thing. Every turn you get one free object interaction of this list right here. You can pick up or drop an item, open or close a door, retrieve or stow an item, draw or sheath a weapon. And you can do one of those for free, sure. No problem. But once you've used that free freebie coupon, once you do another one, so you let's say you open a door, sure, that's free. If you open a second door, okay, now that costs one action point, one action point, one action point, etc. And then there's also a list of actual object interactions that are a little bit more involved and not just a freebie thing. Attempting to open a door that's already locked, transferring items from one another, throwing an object, drinking a potion or administering a potion is one action. So the whole action bonus action thing in Dungeons and Dragons is now completely solved with its one action point 
to drink a potion or one action point to feed a potion. Now, if that potion's on an ally and you don't know where it is, that would cost one action point to get that potion and then a second one to administer. But you see how it all works out and it all connects. It's all nice. Searching. Now, if you want to try and find something on somebody else that they're not willing, you can take the search action to try and you know, rifle their pockets, whether it's in combat or not. This also doubles the find a creature that's hiding as well. And again, it's super easy because if somebody spent an action point to hide, you could counter it and spend an action point to search for them. instead of taking like your entire action, which is why I am not a fan of the Dungeons and Dragons action economy, because your action is this huge, big thing and it gets a little clunky. Now shove and spell casting. I love the shove action. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so cool. You can spend one action point to make an athletics check contested against another creature. They can choose athletics or acrobatics just like normal. So it's very similar to a grapple check type of situation. You're making athletics versus their athletics or acrobatics. And then you make the contest against each other. And one of, and if you win, you can knock the other person back five feet. Cool. Or this says one space. One space is the same as five feet. It's one square on the battle map. But every five that you beat them by moves them back an additional space. So if they get a nat one and you get a nat 20 and you add all this stuff and it's all crazy or whatever, let's say you beat them by 10. They would go push back that one space and another space and another space because you beat it by five and then you beat it by 10. Every five increases the space you shove them back 15 feet. But there's also another cool little mix to this thing is knocking prone. In general, the shove action in Dungeons and Dragons, you can knock prone or knock back. Either way, this is blended together in a way where you make the shove action and you can choose to reduce the total distance by one space and then knock them prone instead. So if you just simply beat them, you were just barely ahead of them and you beat them by a little bit, instead of knocking them back five feet, you could instead just knock them prone. Same thing. But if you get that three space knockback, you could choose to knock them back two spaces and be prone. So boom, they fly backwards and they fall on the back. How dynamic is this. It's just super exciting. I'm sorry, I just get really excited about this stuff. And then there's spell casting, which is the same as making your attack action. Marshals will do their attacks, spell casters will cast their spells. And in DC 20 RPG, every single time you cast a spell, you will be rolling a D20. That's just how it honestly should be. And that's a whole different video for spells and all of that. And speaking of DC 20 RPG and different videos and all that kind of stuff, what do you guys want to see about the system? I'm going to be starting doing live streams to the public. I've been doing patron only live streams for months now, revealing all these different rules, talking about them, getting feedback from patrons, and it's been a really, really cool integrated process with the community. If you want to join that community and be a part of that to get early access, get feedback, all that kind of stuff, link to Patreon's down in the description so you can join this great community that's really excited about this game. But if you're still on the fence about a new game system, I know it's a scary thing to try a new game system, especially one that's in development, but it is coming out strong, coming in hot, and stay tuned to new videos that I post about DC20 and the live streams coming soon. So until next time, stay creative, think outside the box, peace.